My friends, today we're going to talk about taxes in Maine. Maine, the greatest state in the union, as we all know. Um, I just say that because I was born and raised there, even though I haven't lived there many, many years. In fact, a side note, I lost my accent deliberately, even though I used to talk big time like a Mainer. And the reason was because when I moved in, my dad in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, right over the D.C. line, uh, let's just say it's a very diverse state. And so a poor, a poor kid coming from Maine with his Maine accent, no one could understand that was the word I was saying. Let's just put it that way. So very quickly, I said, if I'm going <laughs> to get some friends, I'm going to have to speak like the locals because uh, they pronounce their R's up there. And they don't say wash. They say wash in Washington. What else they say in Maine? Obviously, a yacht and ka and whatnot. But uh, they say volume is volume. All right. At least that's what most people say. But I love the great state of Maine. We entertain the idea of moving back up that way. Not too long ago, but man, I, I just can't take the winters. I'm sorry. Uh, being in the Army in Fort Drum, New York, uh, being raised on an island off the coast of Maine, man, I guess you only get so much thin, uh, thick blood to deal with that at some point. The good Lord says, you can't take it anymore, my friend. Move south. And I've been south ever since. But man, I do love Maine. A wonderful state. Yeah, as everyone says, it's so pretty. On the on, Yeah, it is pretty on the coast and lots of money there. You know, there's people moving up to a gun quit from Massachusetts and whatnot. But the inland of Maine is quite poor, uh, quite poor. And a lot of people uh, disrespect Maine, actually, because of the poverty there. I think the rednecks are white trash and whatnot. And uh, that just that bothers me because there are a lot of good, salty earth people. You know, Maine was very integral in the, helping the Union win the Civil War. And Joshua Chamber and the and all those guys came down there, just kids from Maine, man. And uh, you know, regardless of what your thoughts on the Civil War, you know, these guys, not just in Maine, in Georgia. You know, I'm here in Georgia now, and I love the South, but for sure. But you know, a lot of people risk life and limb to save whatever they thought was the right thing to do. And uh, I just it bothers me when people are disrespectful to the great state of Maine, especially Massachusetts, because Massachusetts they end up moving up to Maine and buying up all the property and really putting a hurting on. Uh, some of the regular folks there because they don't have the income to support the increase in cost of living, especially on the coast. But anyway, enough of that on the diatribe here. Real quick, I am going to show you, and just because it's my video, uh, this is where I'm from, uh, Peaks Island. And there's one you can see, you can move on in there. That's the uh, when you, that's a boat. If you're if you're not a local, you call that a ferry. It's actually a boat. And we used to jump off that right there, right down into there. As a matter of fact, uh, with Sandy Beach. And last time we went, I took my family up there and and uh. <laughs> he's saying it's all rocks i remember i was walking home from it with my kids and i was asking some local i said hey where's sandy beach man i need to get to sandy beach he goes oh that was it i said when i was growing up there was sand on there and he just kind of shut he just kind of chuckled because there is no sand anymore uh maine used to be called welfare island uh to my chagrin i did not know that uh, until i had met some uh, folks that i was uh, we used to live near on the island back in the 70s, and I just got to meet them last year. Uh, one of my good friends from school uh, is a chef now up in Portland, Maine, and his folks are still alive and well and kicking butt and taking names. But Maine used to be a, uh, a mecca for hippies uh, to move in there, just kind of you know, old, the old libertarian hippies. And, man, do I miss the liberals of the old days where they could go to a, a state, uh, you know, they, would, they weren't in your business. They were just saying, hey, we're going to live our life. We're going to compost. We're going to raise chickens, the whole thing. We even have a TV, no cars. Uh, but just the old hippie way of doing things, and the, the left of the today just doesn't do that anymore. It's too bad. They're all up in your face and telling you how to live. And, man, boy, do I ever miss the left of the old days. But, you know, back then, uh, there was no money, no jobs or anything like that. And uh, it was, it was Welfare Island, apparently, is what uh, <laughs> these guys that I grew up with uh, used to call it. But it's pretty interesting, actually, when you think about it, because it's not like that anymore. Maine is very uh, – or not Maine, but uh, Peaks Island – uh, it's just has been taken over by a lot of attorneys and whatnot who've got money. The boat system uh, is a lot more uh, reliable than it used to be. In fact, my mom used to protest, even though she's a liberal, um, you know, and a left winger for sure. Uh, she used to protest because there's only a monopoly that would allow just one, the Casco Bay Lines, to operate the, 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 the taxi service, essentially, the boat to get you back and forth from Peaks Island and the other islands into Portland. And there used to be a guy who said, I'll take you. But that was, you had to do it by the black market. And if he was ever busted on the water, he could literally go to jail for bringing someone taxi and service back and forth from the island. It's crazy. And so my mom, I'm not sure about my dad, but my mom used to protest that. And I'm not sure. I guess it's, they've won because I think right now there's more than just one taxi service to take you back and forth to the island. Almost like an Uber from the late 70s, that's for sure. You can see just a beautiful place. Love it. Um, a lot of history in Maine. There are other islands there, Shabig, 
uh, you know, Long Island, Chabique, uh, and if you take the boat, you know, you take the boat and you go around it, you can see all kinds of different islands if you want. Go in the summertime because I'm like I said, it gets doggone cold. But uh, just a, lot, a wonderful place. Maine's great. Love it. The lobster's only like five bucks a pound. So enough of that about that. Going memory, going down memory lane is always fun. But uh, I miss it. I love the people up there. Just great people. And uh, got a good governor. I'm fond of him for sure. Uh, he's a libertarian. Now, the, what happened to the libertarian hippies on the left have now gone to the libertarian hippies on the right, essentially. And that's what LePage is, the governor there, uh, where they're, you know, freedom lovers, for sure. Just they have to be on the right side of the equation now, which shows you how far to the left the left has gone. And uh, not to make this political, but it's it's uh, it's interesting, actually. It's unfortunate, for sure. All right. So let's talk to the state of Maine with uh, Paul LePage, the governor and see how we're doing here for the state of Maine. As we do, we start with Kiplinger's. Uh, it's a mixed tax pay picture. The Pines Tree State, like the majority of states, exempt Social Security benefits from state income tax, which is good. As of 2014, the pension exemption increased by 4000 bucks up to $10,000 per person of eligible pension income can now be deducted. Although the top state income tax rate has fallen in recent years from 85 to 7.15, the top rate is still high. Maine is one of the few states that do not allow cities and towns to impose their own sales tax, which is good. And Maine residents pay a 5.5% sales tax statewide on most everything except some food items and prescription drugs. A state levy is only 5.5, so that's fantastic. Uh, income tax low is 5.8 on taxable income for a single filers of 21000 and joint filers of 2042. So again, I'm just going to reiterate this. If you've watched my other videos, but if this is your only one, you got to understand the difference between taxable income and gross income. So if you're married filing jointly, my wife and me, Charlotte and Josh, and we have income of 42,000 plus, you got to take your standard deduction um, plus 26,000. So we have uh, 68,700 of, of gross income is when we're going to start paying tax because 42,000 for joint filers means you need 68,000 because of 26,600 in standard deductions that you get tax free if you're over the age of 65. And that's the feds now, the feds because of Trump tax law, 26,600 in standard deduction on uh, for, for everyone over the age of 65 and then in Maine you got to add another 42,100 which is essentially its own standard deduction so not that many people up in Maine got 61,000 68,000 six or seven hundred dollars of gross income just not that many so the vast majority of people in the state of Maine pay no income tax for sure now if you start getting uh, up there you're gonna pay more in fact they just I, I can't remember they passed some stupid bill where if you're over 200,000 or something like that you just get hammered and I think I think that was ruled unconstitutional. I don't know, but that was crazy because all they're going to do is they're going to drive the small business owners, in particular in the Southern Maine, to New Hampshire, where there is no income tax and no sales tax. That just that was just straight up stupid. Uh, and I think they I think that's been overturned somehow, but I don't quote me on that. Uh, effective income tax rate is six point six on joint filers. I bet it's not when we run the SmartAsset.com calculator, but uh, that'd be pretty high for sure. We talk about Social Security benefits not being taxed. We talked about exemptions for uh, eligible pensions and whatnot. Um, starting in 2016, all retirement benefits under Miller Retirement Plan that are included in the taxpayer's AGI are excluded from main taxable income. So if you retired, you know, as an E6, E7, O5, O6, or something like that, you don't have to pay any taxes on your ben on your military pension. Uh, you get up to 10,000 bucks for IRA exemptions, which is good. So same with the IRAs, 401ks, private pensions, you do get an exemption up to $10,000. Uh, individuals, so that, would that be 20000 per tax filer return, my wife and me? I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, it's at least 10000 bucks. I don't know if that's per person or filing unit. Um, all right, let's see. Property taxes, homestead exemption provides property tax relief for individuals who have owned homestead property made for at least a year and make the property they own their permanent residence. So primary residence uh, property owners receive an exemption up to 10000 on the assessed value of the home. Uh, Low-income residents who owned or rented a principal residence any time during the tax year may qualify for a fairness credit. Uh, the, the, median, that's, wow, the median value of home in Maine is $174,000. The property taxes on that are $2,300. So that's going to be $2,355 divided by $175. That's going to give us about 1.35% as a property tax rate, which, which is not low for any stretch of the imagination. 
uh, tax breaks for seniors. A veteran's exemption uh, is 6,000 bucks is available to those who served during a recognized war period are 65 or older are receiving uh, disability and become or became uh, 100% disabled while serving. Um, that's a lot to chomp on there. So I don't know if that's a that, if you have to be all those things or I guess it is. So there are some tax breaks for veterans. I'll let you dive into that a little bit. Um, but that's a lot to chomp on. Those a 65 or older who qualify for the uh, fairness credit, i.e. low income, can receive a credit up to $900 on uh, tax breaks, which and again, a credit, credit, credit. That's good. Uh, that's a dollar for dollar reduction in your taxes that you owe, even though I doubt you owe anything anyway. Um, senior citizen property tax credit for volunteer services available. I hate that stuff. A municipality may adopt an ordinance to allow resident homeowners who are at least 60 years old to earn up to $750 in benefits by volunteering to provide services to municipality. Yeah, the benefits are not subject to many income tax. Eh, I should take that back. Yeah, so basically they're asking you to work for free and they'll give you a $750 credit that you can write off dollar for dollar on your uh, property tax. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess you're going to go plow snow or something like that because, you know, there are people who get paid to do that. But I'll let the state of Maine decide that. Sales tax is due. An annual excise tax is also levied. Uh, the rate depends on a car's age. Um, so, for example, the owner of a three-year-old car with MSRP would pay a tax of 263 bucks if the MSRP was 1950, uh, $19,500. Again, it's based on our MSRP or window sticker price as opposed to actual purchase price. Maine has no inheritance tax. Um, it does have an estate tax with exemption matched up to uh, the federal threshold, which is pretty high. Um, actually, this year is going to be twice that, 2018. So basically, uh, unless you're a super duper monopoly wealth, you're not going to have any estate tax. All right, so let's look at uh, what the great state of Maine is according to Tax Foundation. So again, Maine is a middling state in terms of its overall tax favorability. Uh, so here's a Tax Foundation 7.5 to the state for ta income tax rate, 10.2 total. And again, rank 13. We don't want to be in the top 20, as I've said many times, but there's more to this story than just meets the eye, my friend. So yeah, you could end up paying 10.2%. I have a feeling the vast majority of Mainers are not going to pay anywhere near that. Tax Freedom Day is April 17th, uh, so pretty favorable there. Sales tax, look at that, 5.5 flat across the board, which ranks 29, but that's just on the state. you got to look at the state and local, and the state and local is 5.5 right there. They switch these two boxes around, actually. So the state and local ranks 42, so one of the lowest sales tax in the state. And not shocking to me, because New Hampshire is just right to the south of that, New Hampshire um, you can go down there and not pay any sales tax. In fact, I remember growing up when we come back from Boston and seeing the Red Sox game or something like that, my mom and or dad would stop at the, uh, the Portsmouth uh, Turnpike there right before we hit the state of Maine to get their cigarettes and booze. It was tax-free in New Hampshire and uh, where it wasn't in Maine. We stopped there every time. I'd be like, oh, I just want to go home already. I always stopped there, and that was a lesson of taxation for me when I was just a youngster saying, oh, why are we stopping here? Because we don't have to pay tax on it. I didn't know what that meant, but I do now. Uh, they high, pretty high cigarette tax and a middle of the road uh, tax on on gasoline. Uh, I already talked about proper taxes, but 1.23 does rank in the top 20, which isn't good. And so they're definitely not all that. I mean, not horrific, but definitely not favorable on property taxes for sure. And let's look, look at Tom, the great state of Maine, vacation land, the pine tree state. And they get a relatively tax friendly. So we're going to say Social Security income, 20, look at that, 25000 Retirement income of 25000 And see what they say. Married, filing jointly. And we're born in 1953, which means we're 65 years old. And they are going to say we pay nothing to the state of Maine in taxes. So that's where I'm saying. Look, I mean, right here, they said, oh, my goodness, look at the state income tax rate. Whoa, avoid that. Well, it's not that. It's not that. It's zero. I mean, it depends on what your income is, but if your income is 50,000 bucks, you don't pay anything. Let's do this. Let's say we have 50,000 of IRA distributions and what's our tax there? It goes to a thousand bucks. So if you have a 75,000 of gross income of which 25,000 social security and 50,000 IRA distributions, you're paying 104.8 divided by 75,000. You're paying 1.4% to the state of Maine. That's not too shabby. So let's just flip these around here real quick. See, this is 25,000 bucks. 
and say, this is $50,000. Let's see what we got there. And I bet it's nothing. Um, yeah, so it's nothing. So again, depends on where your income's coming from. But either way, if you're under $100,000 of gross income, you're in a pretty good state when it comes to Maine. Um, if you're interested in Maine, um, read the, you should get books by a guy named Kenneth Roberts. Uh, Ken, if I can go to Amazon here real quick. Uh, Kenneth Roberts just write, wrote all kinds of books on Maine, like during the old days, like during the 1700s about the Indians, uh, Benedict Arnold, whatnot. Kenneth Roberts. Go to Amazon. This guy just wrote just probably some of the best books I've ever read. Absolutely. And you, you'll love him. Aunt Rundle, just a wonderful book. Uh, just rabble in arms. If you like historical fiction, you like the old days, you know, 1700s, going to the 18th century, whatnot. And you like the, the main to Quebec corridor, Vermont, that whole northern New England up to uh, that part of Canada, uh, you know, Quebec, Ontario provinces, whatnot. You'll just, you'll love Kenneth Roberts. He's a great author and just wonderful books. And I think you'll get a lot out of it. Well, that's the state of Maine, my friends. If you're uh, moving there, uh, you'll pay, you know, middle of the road taxes. You're not going to get hammered, but uh, enjoy the state. Just watch out the mosquitoes. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification button uh, to be notified of future content. And we'll see you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.